Hello and welcome everyone, it is me the Laval, awesome as the Power to Do List, back for you with another deck profile. And this one is uh, something I've been very excited for. Uh, B Trooper Battle Wasp, a deck that has been a absolute blast in not only piloting but also learning. Uh, because this deck definitely is non-linear and uh, is very rewarding once you like really sit down and learn all the lines. Um... Yeah, let's quickly get into this, maybe talk some basic combos, and uh, yeah. Uh, starting off the main deck is a copy of Big Insect, you will be playing at least one level 4 vanilla insect um, for your Goki pole, but more on that later. We have the first of the B Troopers here in Mighty Neptune, you, uh, this guy has to first be special summoned from hand by shuffling three of your banished insect monsters into the main deck, note that this says main deck. Um, very nice way to keep resources in rotation. Can revive himself if he leaves the field by an opponent's card effect, either being destroyed or banished. And also boost your insects in the end phase by a stack. Rather neat card. Very good way to keep some resources in rotation. Uh, another cool card here is uh, the Doomdozer. This guy has to be special summoned from your hand, but he uh, gets special summoned by banishing two insect type monsters from grave. And if he inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you send the top card of the deck to the graveyard. Um, can be an extender turn one, and in uh, worst case, you will search this on a turn two or three to just beat your opponent with a big chunky bug. Um, then we have two copies of B Trooper Sting Lancer here. This is kind of an archetypal DD Crow. Uh, during the main phase quick effect, you target an insect in your graveyard and a monster in your opponent's graveyard. Special summon this guy, and both targeted monsters get to the bottom of their like respective player's decks. If this guy hits the field, you add a B Trooper Speller Trap from deck to hand, which will be either, you know, which gives you easy access to your field spell or your counter trap, depending on which turn you are on. Uh, Battle Wasp Arbalest, the Rapid Fire, is a very neat piece of, like, follow-up you will be searching, um, because on normal summon, this targets a level 3 or lower insect monster in your graveyard, special, summon it, special summons it, gives you some good ways to enable, you know, Link 2s on a follow-up turn. Also floats into Battle Wasps if it's destroyed by an opponent's card, um, but in most cases you will search this as a enabler for follow-up. B Trooper Assault Roller, another extender you can play. Um, special summon the Skybrand by banishing an insect monster from your uh, graveyard. Uh, playing this over a Stackipede in the main as you can also normal summon Assault Roller. Uh, you have to special summon a Stackipede by its own effect. Assault Roller, you can technically also normal summon, which is uh, rather neat. Um, so that's why I am playing the one Assault Roller instead of a Stackipede here. Uh, two copies of Dragon Bite. If this guy is normal summoned, you can special summon a level 4 or lower insect monster from hand. Um, also allows you to level modulate by banishing a level 4 or lower insect monsters, monster from your hand, graveyard, or face-up field. Um, you then target a face-up monster on the field, and the face-up monster on the field gains a level equal to the banished one. Um, enables some of the higher level Battle Wasp Synchros, which is kind of cool, and it's just also a good normal summon. Um, it puts another body onto your field. Um, another really sick level 4, probably the best level 4 on the stack, is Resonance Insect. If this guy is sent from field to graveyard, you add a level 1 or higher insect type monster from deck to hand. And if he's banished, you can send an insect type monster from your deck to the graveyard. Um, enables some really sick setup with the, with the uh, Foolish Burial effect. Um, and also easily enables you to get to your bigger insects like uh, Mighty Neptune, Doomdozer, or the Sting Lancer. Really sick card. Definitely one of your main play enablers. Then we have uh, three copies of B Trooper Scale Bomber here. Um, this guy can spe special summon himself if another insect type monster is normal or special summoned. Enables some sick chain blocking with uh, cards like uh, Scout Buggy and Sting. And also this guy is an archetypal uh, ghost ogre, funnily enough, because when an, a monster your opponent controls activates its effect, you can quick effect tribute an insect monster to destroy that monster. Um, which doesn't even make this like terrible to like have laying around on the board at the end of your combo. Um, two copies of Goki Pole. If this is sent to the graveyard, you add a level 4 insect monster from deck to hand. If you added a vanilla, special summon the vanilla, and then you can pop a monster on the field with an attack greater than or equal to that special summon monster's attack. Um, you can either play a low attack target with 1200 attack like the big insect that I'm playing, or you can play a shiny black sea squatter if you want the bigger body. Both choices are perfectly fine, honestly. Two copies of Twinbo here, just another free extender that can special summon himself. Um, three copies of B Trooper Scout Buggy, the first in line of many, I guess. Um, if this guy hits the field, he special summons another copy of himself from hand, deck, or graveyard. Lovely way to get into your Link 2s. Similar to Battle Wasp Sting the Poison. If this guy hits the board, you add a Battle Wasp monster from deck to hand. Could be a pin or a Twinbo. 
two extenders that can special summon themselves. But uh, Sting also has the added benefit of being a disruption in uh, that he can quick effect, tribute another insect, target an effect monster your opponent controls, negate that monster's effect until the end of the turn. Really cool, uh, since in a lot of cases you will be summoning Sting of your Seraphim uh, in the opponent's turn for another interruption. As previously mentioned, Pin is another extender if you control any insect monster, special summon the sky from your hand. And during the main phase, you can inflict 200 damage to your opponent for each battle was pinned the balls eye you control. Um, I guess ways to cheese in time, you know? Um, generic hand trap here in Ghost Ogre. Monster Reborn as generic extender. And then we get to B Trooper Descent. This special summons a B Trooper token, Insect Earth level 3, 1000 a a, 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 a attack and defense. And if you control an insect with 3000 or more attack, you can also destroy one other spell or trap on the field. A really cool and flexible card, honestly. Either an extender or has some added back row removal, rather neat. Caught by the Grave Against Hand Traps, B Trooper Formation. This is a field spell that allows you to extend because you target a B Trooper monster in your graveyard, special summon it, can't attack, um, and also you lose life points equal to the uh, summoned monster's original attack. And if a face up insect monster or monsters are, are controlled by a battle or, battle or card effect, you can special summon a B Trooper token. Um, to kind of replace those bodies, which is kind of neat. Um, then your counter trap and B Trooper Fly Instinct. When your opponent activates a monster effect while you control a B Trooper, you can negate the activation and destroy that monster. And also the nice part why you can get away with playing only one is that during the end phase, if this is in your graveyard and you control an insect with 3000 or more attack, you can banish a insect monster from your graveyard to reset this card, which is rather lovely. Capping off the main deck are three infinite impermanences here, uh, just for some more generic hand traps. Uh, the centerpiece of most of your end boards will be Giant B Trooper Invincible Atlas, and this guy is an absolute house. Um, while this guy has uh, 3000 or less attack, your opponent cannot target him with card effects, and also he cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. So we also ha already have Dragoon level protection, um, but this guy also has some really cool effects that you can activate by tributing an insect monster. You can either special summon a B Trooper monster from your deck, uh, from your deck or this guy gains 2,000 attack until the end of the turn, making him a very good setup tool to get the Sting Lancer turn one, to get to the counter trap, or making him 5k on a follow-up to maybe punch your opponent with a big bug. Um, Seraphim Papillon is a Link 3 extender on Link Summon, displaces counters on it uh, for each insect monster used, and this can by quick effect remove a counter to special summon a level 4 or lower insect monster from graveyard, but you can only use one of each effects per turn. So. You can summon this, gain the counters, and then only on the following turn summon an insect back from the graveyard. Um, very weird restrictions, honestly, um, but the card is still great for the deck. Um, three copies of B Trooper Armorhorn. Um, this guy gives you an additional normal summon for an insect monster and is also able to revive himself from the graveyard by banishing three other insects from the graveyard. Um, great tool for extension. No doubts about that, as another normal summon is just kind of neat. And also being able to banish three insects from the graveyard to revive himself, giving you Link 2 fodder for your Seraphim Papillon is rather neat. The other insanely cool Link 2 you're playing is Insector Pico Falena. If this is Link summoned, you discard a card, target another insect monster you control, equip an insect from deck to it as an equip spell that gives it 500 attack and defense. And this also enables you to uh, target three insects in your graveyard, shuffle them into the deck to draw one card. Really great card to keep cards you want to have in rotation in rotation. Um, replenishes your hand, gets your cards back into your deck, as previously mentioned, and also easily sets up uh, a resonance insect trigger on your turn one, as you can just equip the resonance insect to another insect you control, most likely an armor horn at that point. Um, so yeah, Amorage is here for those hands where you have to pass on a DD Crow, um, as you can bomb a summon resonance insect, link that into Amorage, and then pass and pray to god that you the search sting lancer carries you to victory um cicada king is one of your end board pieces possibly if you can make it um this guy is a negate by detaching a material from himself and uh then you can either make an insect monster on the field gain 500 defense or change its battle position in most cases you will want to change the battle position because if the battle position of cicada king is changed you can special summon one insect monster from hand or graveyard and defense uh, giving you just another body on the field which is rather neat um so yeah then we have the battle wasp synchro lineup here ballista the armor get on is just a big uh big uh, i guess closer 
uh, because if this guy is summoned, you can banish all insects from your graveyard to make your opponent's monsters lose 500 attack and defense for each monster banished. Um, Pierces also revives three banished level 11 or lower insects if it leaves the field by an opponent's card. Um, rather cool card, just honestly. I just play this for the coolness factor. <laughs> uh, Hammer the Conquering Bow is another like big battle wasp synchro you can make. Um, decreases opponent's monster's attack if he inflicts battle damage and technically also gives you another way to win in time if he doesn't inflict battle damage. Um, how about the charge can help you get over some big monsters your opponent controls because if this guy battles an opponent's monster with equal uh, with equal or higher attack, you can half that monster's attack during damage calc only. And Azusa, Azusa, Azusa the Ghost Bow is here as a Synchro Tuner that technically would also enable to uh, make Hama attack twice if you make Hama with uh, Azusa. And you're also able to revive this if a battle wasp destroys an opponent's monster by uh, battle. Also more ways to win in time by burn damage. <laughs> Getting into the side deck here, um, Komangas, the Sticky Sting Kai Kaiju or Gadala for that matter um, are good options to uh, side in this deck because you can easily search those via Resonance Insect to give you some outs for Troublesome Towers. Retaliating Sea is a hand trap of hand trap macrocosmos against certain decks. Uh, if your opponent activates a spell that includes the effect to special summon a monster, you can quick effect, special summon this guy and afterwards it's a macrocosmos on field. Funnily enough, also, if this guy is sent from field to graveyard, you can add an Earth Insect with 1500 or less attack from your deck to your hand, except itself. Uh, so you can technically add a Resonance Insect for a follow-up turn. As previously mentioned, Shiny Black Sea Squatter just either play a small attack for more pop or big attack for big attack in, you know, your vanilla slot. Primitive Butterfly and a Stackipede, uh, as well as Dream Cicada, are just cool extenders you can maybe make use of. As a Primitive Butterfly can special itself on an empty board, a Stackipede can be special summoned, uh, has to be special summoned by banishing an insect from grave. And Dream Cicada is an OCG card that you can special summon if you control an attack position insect monster. Uh, Trans Cicada is, I think, a really cool card, honestly. Uh, if this is special summoned, it special summons a mold token, um, which not only would give you easy access to Halbert already, as the token is level 3, but also would give you a like link 3 off of one card if you're able to special this. A way to special this would, for example, be Insect Imitation. Um, you tribute a monster, special summon an insect from deck whose level is 1 higher, so tributing a sting gets you to Trans Cicada. Multiplication of Ants might also be a cool thing to consider for this, as it's a very link-heavy deck, similar to uh, the guy that carried me through the NNR event in Master Duel. Um, you can probably play some insect legacy support like Metamorphosed Insect Queen, Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, Parasite Paranoid, and Cocoon of Ultra Evolution if you feel like it, um, to maybe take this into a more like casual route, and uh, maybe play some generic links if you find the space. I didn't, but Nightmare Phoenix is here as a reminder. Um, so I'll quickly show you guys some basic combos, and then maybe give you guys some closing thoughts. Alright, the uh, first combo I'll be showing you guys is probably with a... yeah, you couldn't pick a better hand. Sting the Poison and Scout Buggy in an opening hand uh, on their own with a discard are full combo. Um, but as you can see, we are uh, normal summoning Dragon Bite, summoning Sting, adding Pin, going for the Armor Horn. Armor Horn will normal summon that Scout Buggy from our hand. And because we have enough extender, we can be kind of greedy here and make Cicada King um, before committing to our Pika Falena. Cicada King doesn't Nibiru proof us, which is, I guess, the big weakness of the deck, as the deck still struggles against Nibiru. Um, drew the uh, Scale Bomber here of the recycling with the Pika Falena, which was rather big, honestly. Um, we'll banish now for the Armor Horn, trigger the Resonance Insect I banished. Goki Pole will add me another level 4. I choose to pick up a Sword Roller here. Um, this could also be an Arbalest, just pick a level 4 you would like on a follow-up turn. Could also be Resonance Insect. There's a lot of good options for that. And with that, we are not only sitting on our standard 3 interruption board with the uh, Sting the Poison Negate, the Sting Lancer, uh, the Sting Lancer DD Crow, and the Flying Sting Counter Trap, but we also have Cicada King here. Um, as an additional layer of disruption. And even our follow-up isn't looking too terrible because uh, if this whole thing gets outed, Arbalest can bring back Sting. Sting will add you another extender and from there on you already have four insect in rotation, which again are able to make Invincible Atlas um, through you know the means of going through another Armor Horn and Pico Falena combo. Um, so I guess you can definitely tell 
there's not only a lot you can do on a turn one with this deck because this is for interruptions, but also the follow up this deck enables is absolutely crazy. So with that, let's take a look at another hand. This is a hand where we only saw Sting, but we also saw Resonance, which is kind of crazy. Um, so definitely wanted to showcase that. Here we also see the interaction I previously mentioned, uh, ch Scale Bomber chain blocking the uh, Sting the Poison there against something like an Ash Blossom. Using the additional normal summon from Armor Horn for the Resonance Insect, special summoning pin, making Pico Felena, chain blocking Pico Felena with the Resonance Insect we just linked off for another Resonance Insect equipped. Shuffling back with Pico Falena, drawing a card. Uh, when you shuffle back with uh, Pico Falena, you also need to watch, uh, al always need to watch out for um, do you still have enough insects left in grave after that um, to banish for your armor horn. In most cases, you will need at least one insect as uh, Pico Falena, the equipped resonance insect, will give you already two. With that, we proceed to the opponent's turn. Seraph and Papillon in the draw phase will again revise Sting the Poison. Uh, for an additional layer of interruption and this one is looking even crazier. We did not make as many disruptions this time So I definitely didn't commit as much resources, but you can definitely see that resolving two resonance insects It definitely leaves us in a good spot here um, As we not only have mighty Neptune, I think even uh, live in hand if I'm not completely wrong um, As I think there is a uh, three banished main deck insects and even then that isn't rather that isn't really rough to do. Um, we still have the Sting Negate, we still have the Counter Trap, we still have the DD Crow in hand, and also have a Ghost Ogre additionally. Um, but yeah, we have two really good normal summons on the follow up turn with Arbalest and Resonance Insect. Um, so there's definitely a lot of plays to be made um, on that following turn. But I think with that, we move into a third replay, which shows a rather lackluster hand. Let's put it at that. Yes, this doesn't look good. But let me tell you, this is still three disruptions. <laughs> Technically even four with the infip here. And we'll go ahead, fire the descent here for the B Trooper token. Uh, normal summoning Goki Pole, making Armor Horn Goki Pole, adding Arbalest here as we can... Uh, uh, Armor Horn, normal summon Arbalest, Arbalest will revive the pole. Make Pico Falena. We can safely pitch the counter trap here as we can recycle that in the end phase. Pico Falena will equip a resonance insect. We uh, mix uh, Invincible Atlas here send sting here since we were able to add that additional mighty neptune we are able to recycle the three insects we just banished for our armor horn for that body tribute the body for the sting lancer with our invincible atlas i misclick here and don't play around mech knights don't do this place these seraphim like either here or like somewhere here um also forget to like put in always chain so that i can revive this thing and draw phase um, but yeah, we are still sitting comfortably on our three disruption back, uh, three disruptions backed up by an infinite impermanence. Um, we not only have uh, Arbalest as our normal summon for the following turn, um, we can technically also grab a B Trooper Descent with a Sting Lancer we have in hand, and we still have the B Trooper Field Spell information, uh, which would be able to revive Invincible Atlas, for example, to enable easy access to Scout Buggy, which was make a Cicada King, which gives you a bit of like on-board negate proofing against something your opponent might have established before you combo off. So you can definitely see there's a lot of like really cool lines you can take to still get to your end board in the stack. Um, but I think we get more into like those things uh, once we're back with the deck. And with that, we are back with the deck. Um, oh, this is just a lot of fun, honestly. This is so much fun. It's so non-linear and just, just sitting down and drawing test hands and going through the combos is already great. There's so many ways where you can get to your setup. You always make the same or a similar setup, but you have so many ways to get to it. And even the three test hands you just saw just don't do this deck justice in how non-linear it is. Um, in general, you do have some solid uh, solid turn one setups. Three disruptions is nothing to scoff at, especially considering we are not only talking about an on onboard monster negate, a counter trap and a DD Crow in hand. So it's even layered disruptions. You're not losing to one blowout in mo most cases. Um, but I think where the deck really shines is the follow-up. The turn two of this deck is insanely strong, as in most cases you are able to set up follow-up play by searching respective cards uh, 
either during while um, while disrupting your opponent, either grabbing, for example, the B Trooper Field spell of a Sting Lancer you summoned in your opponent's turn, which you will most definitely be able to do, or by adding an Arbalest to the hand by the means of Sting the Poison if you got him set up. Um, and even, you know, something like a Cicada King reviving a Goki Pole that somewhere down the line gets popped, adding an Arbalest or a Resonance Insect gives you so much value on a follow-up turn. In general, the deck's really good at managing its resources, keeping them in check, going through its combo lines, and just also even, you know, kind of grinding out games. Um, absolutely lovely deck in, um, in, in general, I think... Uh, great deck um, would hope this gets support in the future because this is already crazy good uh, or it feels at least good um, to me as a casual player taking this journey into modern Yu-Gi-Oh I guess you could say <laughs> um, but yeah absolutely incredible deck and uh, I think as previously alluded to and as the side deck shows you have a lot of options to fit this deck to also your personal um, like wants what you want out of the deck um, and also have some ability to like personalize your build a bit because um this deck has a lot of options because like two to three insects with like an extender is still full combo so like what's not to like about this honestly it's a very flexible combo deck that also has some grind game and is very rewarding to learn and pilot but with all that out of the way let me know what you think down below and i will thank you guys very much for watching see you guys again next time but until then goodbye